Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week, I'm actually in London giving a talk on Bevy at Rust Nation UK. So if you're there, come say hi, and let's jump into it. Today, we're starting off with this quote from Alice. Dev tools can be more than a grab bag of things that developers find useful. There are real commonalities and patterns. And of course, the biggest news this week is Bevy 0.13.1 is out. This release includes a number of fixes that I personally was waiting for, including making the globals visible in vertex shaders again. And overall, we see about 59 closed issues. The link to this GitHub view is available on the website, so go check it out if you're looking to see what was fixed. As I mentioned earlier, I'm in London this week giving a talk on Bevy. My talk centers on the rusty ergonomics that Bevy applies to empower people to build games, so when I saw RFC 77, the DevTools abstraction, I knew I had to read it. The RFC tries to answer questions like, what is a dev tool? What is the purpose of Bevy dev tools, the crate? How will dev tools be registered, called, and displayed? The RFC itself is a great read, and I encourage you to go take a look and read it if you're interested. But also note that it hasn't been merged yet and will likely undergo some more editing this week. So if you'd prefer to wait for the merged RFC, you'll be waiting a little bit longer. Some other interesting developer work this week is meshlets. Meshlets are seeing some promising progress and look like they're on their way to being merged behind a feature flag. Meshlets are very exciting, but of course not a one size fits all solution. So it's also encouraging to see continued progress towards GPU driven rendering as well. The developer behind this PR describes meshlets as being really meant for rendering really dense, ridiculously high resolution scenes, where the goal is to render one triangle per pixel. So you're never limited by lack of geometric detail. That's directly from this comment, which is also linked to from the site and includes a little bit more information about performance. Remember, this is an experimental feature that technically hasn't even been merged yet that is behind an experimental flag. So we're looking at some pretty early work here. The meshlets work also do point out a growing stress point in the material and shader abstractions that Bevy uses. In addition to the possible shaders you can define after the prepass and deferred were added, which you can see here in vertex and fragment shaders, prepass vertex and fragment, deferred vertex and fragment, it looks like there will be a few more once meshlets get merged. This includes meshlet mesh, fragment shader, prepass fragment shader, and deferred fragment shader. All of this together means that you need to have a growing set of knowledge about what imports to use and how to if def code appropriately if you want to support all of these different features. To be clear though, you don't have to support them all if you don't need to. So you only have to take on this complexity if you do actually want to take on that complexity. This YouTube video shows off the progress of an Animal Crossing Stardew Valley crossover. This inspired sandbox includes resource gathering, a number of different tiles and health bars, as well as the classic Animal Crossing curves world aesthetic. Updates for this one are posted regularly on Mastodon and other platforms. This 2D Minecraft sim got ambient occlusion for the back walls. So you can see the front walls and the back walls inside of this little grid that is being built. This is an asteroid style ship controller that I built on my way to London. You can choose your ship, fly around and shoot some lasers. I didn't do any of the 2D collision yet because I got stuck researching AABVs and AABV 2Ds, but overall I'm pretty happy with it for the short flight that I was on. Up in the top right, you can see something we're gonna talk about a little bit later, IS Perf UI, which has been actually pretty nice so stick around for that. About three weeks went into this first person StarCraft-like game meant to act as a tech demo. And thus the Discord thread has a long list of references and different plugins and other assets that were used. Definitely go check out the rest of the video on YouTube and the Discord thread if you're interested in what they used. Shu is bioinformatic scientific visualization software built in Bevy. So a slight departure from games, but nonetheless still interesting. It's also open source on GitHub, self-described as an app to plot multidimensional data to a metabolic map, which is honestly a little bit over my head scientifically, <laughs> but it still looks very cool. This is some of the output. No issue would be complete without having some ray casting. This ray casting is on arbitrary convex shapes in a collision detection geometric query library written by the author of Bevy XPBD. There's a Bevy XPBD rebrand coming up, so we'll be sure to cover that when it happens. This showcase shows the Voxel planet generation in the Cosmos repo on GitHub. Cosmos is a multiplayer block-based space exploration game that's in active development. And I know the little UI down here is just a bunch of rectangles, but it still feels Minecraft inspired to me. This somewhat unintentional pixelated green effect was created while chasing a different effect. It all goes to show that you can still create very cool things even when you don't exactly mean to. The Compass Map Editor underwent a refactor completely to use mesh and materials so that they could be able to apply custom shaders to individual sprites. This allows custom selection and deselection outlines and more. The refactor showed a 48% memory usage reduction by moving to meshes and changing the caching strategy. Zulitaire is a grid-based puzzle game deploying on iOS. 
It's the author's first deployed Bevy mobile game. And if you don't own an iPhone, you can see this video of gameplay over in the Discord thread. We've seen quite a few iOS Bevy apps deployed over the past few weeks. Enjoy nature, eat baked goods, and avoid bill-throwing enemies in this Buddy Up Jam entry. Path to Renewal is a maze game that we've seen developed in previous showcases. Playable on itch.io, and I would suggest downloading it for performance reasons over playing the version in the web browser. Next up, we've got some SDF meshes that are computed on the CPU. These use an approach called dual contouring, which is somewhat related to marching cubes. Next, we've got another one of those slightly unintentional creative coding effects. I find that creative coding tends to have far more emergent behavior and emergent visuals than other approaches. And it's one of the things that really makes it unique. Extreme Kitty Sledding is playable on itch.io. This is a three-day game jam entry and involves being a cat in a cardboard box. And as you go, you can collect catnip and yarn. The catnip sends you speeding forward and the yarn you can use for upgrades. Once you have enough yarn, you can buy something like a boost or a new cart. I've had a lot of fun playing casual games like this in the past. So I, uh, you know, played the whole thing. This week, we've got more updates for the procedural seven day roguelike challenge entry. In this case, we've got rainfall and more particle effects. This game is really shaping up to have its own unique aesthetic, and it does seem like they're going to continue working on it, so I'm excited to see where it goes. And that's it for showcases. Let's get into the crate releases. I've booted up my little Asteroids ship controller to show you IS Perf UI, which got its first release this week. IS Perf UI is a customizable performance debug overlay for Bevy UI and you can see it running in the top right. IS Perf UI is made with Bevy UI and not any other third-party UI solution. Pretty easy to set up, has customizable appearance and styling, and it's modular. You decide what info you want to display. There's also support for highlighting, which I'll see if I can trigger by firing entirely too many projectiles that I never coded to despawn. And you can see that I'm starting to get a couple of yellows, maybe a little bit of red, see if I can get it to trigger. I will say it's a lot easier to trigger performance issues before you restart your computer. <laughs> Typically what you would see if there was an issue is either the FPS or the frame time or something like that would flash the redder color. And you can see actually as I'm doing this, uh, my frame times are going down into yellow a little bit. And you can see the entity count also just constantly going up. Setting up IES Perf UI is pretty easy. You choose what you want, you add the Perf UI plugin, and then you can set up whatever you want. I've found it pretty useful already, and it looks like over time this is going to develop as an external crate before being submitted to Bevy proper. We'll see how it goes over time though. Also released this week is Web Panic Report. Web Panic Report is a panic hook that replaces an HTML element with a bug report. Now there is a web demo, but note that the web demo link in the readme is actually the wrong organization on GitHub. So use the organization from the GitHub link, not the organization in the example URL, and you'll get to this page. You can trigger a panic, and then we see a bug report here with the panic. This is pretty awesome, honestly, and I'm super excited to see how this develops over time. Bevy eGUI also got its new release, which brings clipboard support to the web. It was a pretty light but really exciting set of crate releases this week, so let's start moving into devlogs. This devlog for gravity sickness covers four to five months of learning Bevy and Rust, building a scape-like action RPG. This devlog shows off three months of development for Hens Tear. Updates include talking about A-star pathfinding, ray casting, map updates, and more. Playable online at lomics.com. And there's a project thread in the Bevy Discord if you'd like more frequent updates. And with that, we're moving into one of my favorite sections, the educational section or the tutorials. Extreme Bevy got part five this week. Extreme Bevy is a tutorial series that aims to recreate the extreme violence game by Simon Green. It implements online P2P multiplayer using rollback netcode. The series focuses on Bevy, GGRS, and Matchbox. The newest section, part five, focuses on procedural generation and explores how to seed a random number generator and use it to generate a map. And just in case you don't know what Matchbox is, painless peer-to-peer -peer WebRTC networking for Rust and Wasm. Creating modular 3D characters is a common feature of many video games. This three-hour video goes into bones, parenting, attaching parts, and linking animations to build modular characters. And then we've got a tutorial in GIST form for inline assets. An inline asset is an asset whose data is encoded entirely within the asset path itself, without the need to load data from a file system or anywhere else. This is similar in concept to a data URL, which is very commonly used on the web, which allows an image or resource to be encoded directly within the URL itself. This GIST explores how to take advantage of Bevy's asset system 
to manage procedurally generated data for materials in this way. This top-down shooter tutorial is a showcase we've seen before. It uses a KD tree for efficient collisions and is capable of handling large hordes of enemies with simple bullet collisions. This video is a time-lapse of the game being built from scratch. It also includes fixing some common errors that one might encounter when working with Bevy. And as every week, we've got some more merged PRs. In 12,500, we get border radiuses. Radii? Radius. This node bundles now have a border radius field, which can be controlled by constructing UI recs. The material plugin got a new field to enable or disable queuing shadows for new materials. And in 12,508, we get a new triangle 3D. This primitive allows you to construct, as you might imagine, a 3D triangle. In 11,019, we got the ability to register one-shot systems via commands, which is a pretty nice usability improvement for one-shot systems. And of course, if you want to contribute, we have a whole host of PRs that were opened this week. Often PRs need review, but don't necessarily require a lot of actual coding work. While issues opened this week might require you to build a reproduction or write some documentation yourself. In any case, no matter how you choose to do it, getting involved is super appreciated. And that's it for this week in Bevy Engine. I will see you next week.